Hi, John here. Uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, this evening, I'm going to tie you a, a basic pattern. Uh, it's uh, called the Clouser Minnow. Uh, and following on from my last video, this particular tying is done to perhaps help uh, beginners and people learning this fly for the first time. So if you're an experienced tire, this is definitely not the video for you. It's far too long. Uh, but you're welcome to watch. Uh, so in the vise here, I've got a, a Gamma Gatsu uh, saltwater hook. Uh, this hook's probably one of the top rated hooks at the minute. It's very strong. Uh, it's good for for hooking up. Uh, it's in my uh, Renzetti ro rotational vise, or rotary vise, as you, most people call them. And the silk that I'm using here is, uh, it's not my normal one. Uh, but it's a uh, it's white, it's white nylon. Uh, it's from Unithread and it's two hundred and ten denier. So as normal, I introduce the silk from behind the hook and make tight wraps forward to the eye, leaving one or two millimeters clearance. And using this uh, tail piece, I use that as a guide to form a continuous thread base or foundation to the rear of the hook. Uh, pretty much in line with where the, the barb would be. Uh, although this is 210, it's quite skinny thread, so I, I actually made two, two passes. Uh, it's important that this part of your fly is strong. So uh, as a trout angler, you would fish the hook as shown, but uh, most saltwater flies, you're trying to make the hook swim upside down. Uh, so that's how the, the fly would come through the water. But the only way of achieving that is to put a counterbalance weight on the hook. Uh, this particular fly, with the size of that hook, bead chain will work but it's right on the limit, so I'm using, uh, going to be using dumbbell eyes. So uh, I'm forming these down with uh, cross wraps and axe wraps. <laughs> now I am going to break the silk here. <laughs> uh, it's not my normal nylon, so uh, yeah, you're going to see a mistake here shortly. But uh, I've left it in the video because, again, part of learning is that you have to deal with this. It's going to happen because you're you're trying to, trying to tie beachy and eyes or dumbbell eyes down as tight as possible. So, uh, if you're starting off and and well, it is coming up to Christmas soon, and if you've got your your bonus in, I would suggest that you. Uh, I'm going to show you here a traditional bobbin holder. So the, these ones are extremely effective. I've used them for years, but uh, if you've got your bonus in or Santa's been very, very kind to you, I would maybe recommend using the second bobbin holder that I'm showing here. Uh, it's the first one really on the market that you don't need to use a a dubbing threader, or sorry, a thread uh, tool to to load it. There's a little slot up the side of the bobbin and you can put the silk directly into it. So it's it's convenient if you're tying flies with different coloured silks. It's, it's very speedy to, to change colours and to uh, obviously I'm messing around here showing you this but uh, you can just line that up to the side of that and hook it in and that's your thread in and you don't need any additional tools so yes it's an expensive bulb and it's a real treat but uh yeah <laughs> I, I i happen to enjoy using it so this is the recovery program for what happens when your silk is broken so i'm going to 
catch the the piece of silk that came off the tail end and over wrap it. Now I wouldn't do this if I judged that the whole fly had came loose but I think that it's the previous wraps were still of good enough quality so I'm, I'm catching that in. So that's us sort of back to where we were but I'm going to go over those wraps just to make double sure. So that's those eyes back in place and no panic, you know, you don't have to waste that much time. This is a an extremely quick fly to tie. Uh, I'm taking extra steps here to allow me to get a bit of audio in. So with leaving the, the thread at the, the front of the eye, I'm now going to put some glue on my dumbbell eyes. Uh, I sort of always do this. So the, the belly of this <coughs> bait fish pattern is going to be bucktail. Uh, one of these bucktails will tie several hundred flies, but uh, this one's pretty new. Uh, and we're, we're going to tie the bucktail on the, the top, because just remember again, this fly is going to be inverted in the water. So I'm now selecting a piece from about halfway down uh, and I'm looking for fibers that are above two inches longer so there's not many loose fibers in bucktail but if I hold it halfway down and just brush out the ends any small fibers will come out now again uh, I'm explaining this a little bit more detail uh, Proportion is one of the biggest things when you're learning. So I'm aligning the fibers and I'm looking to get a fly approximately two inches long. So I'm actually using my finger as a guide. Uh, it's maybe not so good if you're not an adult, but basically to my knuckles, approximately two inches. So uh, I'm explaining that, that you can use your finger as a guide. So once I've established uh, the length of fibres I need, I'm transferring it from one hand to the other. And again, if you're a beginner, that transfer process, you can actually lose your accuracy of where you were. So if you're in any doubt, uh, you can do this. I never do it these days, but you can put a little mark. And then when you do your, your transfer from one hand to the other, uh, you don't really get lost uh, but again once you've tied a few flies uh, you'll not ever have to do that again so now I've cut this to the mark and I'm presenting those fibers at about 45 degrees to the eye of the hook so again You'll see here that as I put the silk out over the top, it doesn't really twist or misbehave. And again, that's one of the fundamentals is that uh, you can buy craft fur from your local craft shop. You can buy cheaper bead chain eyes, but really guys don't mess with the quality of thread that you're using. It's nearly the most important thing. So I'm now tying those in. And I'm making sure that none of the, the stalks uh, protrude into the eye. And I'm fully securing those down. So the, the way Bob tied this fly, he tied them in at the front and then he, he folds it out over the, the, the dumbbell eyes to form the body. 
So now we're going to take the silk and go behind the bead chain eyes or dumbbell eyes and lightly tie that down onto the hook shank. So this is how the fly will swim belly down. Uh, I would don't make those turns too tight, otherwise the, the tail of the bucktail will splay. Uh, so th this flies for predator fish, which will always have teeth. So we're going to have to protect those uh, those turns of thread on the body. So again, this is a point where you can uh, put on some uh, super glue or varnish or anything really to protect those threads. Uh, if you, even a little bit of varnish. Uh, will make the body outlive the, the length of the tail. So again, we've, we've put a fair bit of super glue on there and if you're new to fly tan, uh, you would have to uh, perhaps pause the fly at this stage. And one of the best ways of doing that is to use a, a half hitch tool. You can see I'm searching for it because I normally do this by hand, but I want to show you this tool uh, because as a beginner it would be a, a very, very helpful thing for you to have. Uh, effectively, all it is is a, a big barrel with the insert removed out of it. and So that's it there. It's just effectively a little hole. Uh, so again, you can use a, a barrel pen with no point on it and what we're effectively using this to do is to put in a single overhand knot. Uh, I'm going to do one here by hand, which is how I would do it. Uh, but again, for beginners, if you do a if you do a half hitch like this, uh, keeps your fingers away from that glue, and you can then cut that off and uh, set the fly to one side. Okay, so you could now snip that off and you would even do that same process if you wanted to change thread colour. So actually I'm just checking there because with all my waffling the glue is actually dried so I'm going to keep going. So the next material we're going to do is the wing and you can have this uh, black, white, chartreuse, pink, red, uh, but I'm going to do an orange one this time. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about these. Obviously this is a coming off an animal and I'm just showing you there that the ones near the very base of the bucktail, they're too, they're too thick and they won't move in the water. Uh, it's almost, you know, it is coming off a, a type of deer, so it's 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 too hollow. Uh, so I'm going to come approximately halfway up the the body for my selection, and I'm going there because those particular fibers are longer than the two inch fly that I'm tying, but I'm staying away from the very tail. Uh, I save those for my longest flies. Uh, so I consider those the, the premium ones and I only use them for flies at 3 inches or so. So here I'm selecting uh, again about pencil laid thickness of fibres. I'm going to grab the middle of them and take out any little loose ones. And then I'm going to repeat this measurement process. So again, you, you won't need to use a marker here because you've already established the length of your fly. So what I'm doing here is just making sure that those orange fibers are the same length or slightly longer than the white. And then I'm marking that position visually and then changing hands to snip. I 
uh, again introducing her onto the hook 45 degrees means you don't ever have a, a step and I'm putting those in place again if something isn't right don't just keep carrying on uh, you can take it off and uh, what I'm showing you here is that uh, this is tacky wax so if you're ever struggling with your thread uh, you can rub a bit of this on the spool uh, and it sort of calms everything down uh, one of these tubes lasts a long long time so it's a good asset to have So again, presenting those uh, those fibers at 45 degrees, and I'm showing here that the fibers are actually protruding into the eye of the hook, which we don't really want because that's going to make it harder to thread the fly on. And I'm showing here that with normal scissors, you'll never get in. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm actually just pulling the fibers away from the eye, and then going to continue to lash these down tight. Uh, now my camera stopped there for a little moment, but what I did was I tied in another very, very small bunch of, of light grey bucktail on top, and that's just to give the appearance of uh, the back of the, of the bait fish. Uh, you don't really need to do that, but I think it makes it look that little bit more lifelike. So now I'm retrieving from my... Uh, stash of materials uh, a single strand of blue crystal flash uh, and I'm going to double this over the thread uh, and bring it up to the, the 12 o'clock position completely upright and then I'm going to tie this down over the head with, uh, with touch and turns And that'll just give the fly a little bit of a shimmer in the water. Uh, so that's the fly finished. Uh, all we're going to do now is to do a, a finish on the head. And a good tip I would tell you again is that if you put the varnish on before you do your knot, uh, it makes it that little bit more secure. Uh, and then I'm going to produce uh, a whip finish. Now, don't get carried away with whip finishes. You can equally do a uh, half hitch. <laughs> don't do it like that. Uh, that jumped over the dumbbell eye, so I'm going to have to rescue that. Uh, that's probably my uh, inexperience of not doing too many half hitches in the last few years. But uh, don't let anyone tell you that doing a head with a... Uh, with half hitches is substandard. A lot of guys do it, uh, and if you do, if you use a good Sally Hansen's varnish or super glue, uh, six or seven half hitches is every bit as good as a, a whip finish. So let's not be snobbish about the, the method of finishing. Then to just give everyone a final protective coat, uh, one more lashing of Sally Hansen's or water-based loon on your head. And that's the fly tied. Uh, this is a really effective pattern. Uh, it's been around a long time and it's caught nearly every species under the sun. And again, the benefit that the, is that the fly swims upside down, so less chance of hooking rocks. So tight lines, folks, and I hope you enjoyed that.